piece. This is my favorite one. This is a, a really nice trilobite, and I have not touched it up to this point because look at the perfect condition it's in. The free cheek is even there. I don't know if the other one is available or not, but this is also from the Wheeler Shell Formation. And I didn't want to ruin this using my crude methods at home, but waited till I could get access to a lab. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and remove the matrix off the top using this air scribe. I was able to use the air scribe to chisel away all the excess matrix that's right here. I haven't yet hit the fossil, but have left a thin layer of matrix to protect the fossil while I'm working on it. We are now going to clean up the fossil using the air abrasive. Right now it is set for about 5 psi, which is great. We're still going to be using the aluminum oxide. Right now I'm trying to expose the side of the fossil just so I know where the trilobite ends and the matrix begins. So as you can see, I have made quite a bit of progress on this trilobite. I have managed to clean off right here and have moved all the way down to here. We're going to keep working on exposing the edges along right here because I'm trying to find exactly where the fossil ends and the matrix starts. As you can see, we've come pretty far in cleaning up the fossil. We've managed to remove the matrix to expose the edges, so now we know where the fossil is at. Next step is going to be to clean off the top. If you look carefully, you can see an eye right here, which is pretty cool, and then there will be another eye underneath this part here, but I have to clean it out first. And it's going to take quite a while because it's extra thick. The reason it's so thick is because there's actually another really small trilobite. You won't be able to see it very well, but I'm using a microscope, so I can clearly see the bottom of a second trilobite, which is pretty cool, I think. Unfortunately, it does have to go because I want the biggest trilobite here, not the small one. The new technique I'm trying, I'm using it because I'm trying to get this really, really nice detailed up here protected until it's the last thing to do. The theory is that if I work on the top first and get it all nice and exposed and then work my way to the edges, the aluminum oxide will ruin the previously exposed delicate areas. So as you can see, my trilobite just popped off the rock, which I am not really happy about, to tell you the truth. I really wanted it to stay right where it was. I tried to pry off that little trilobite, and the whole thing ended up popping out instead. I'm going to keep working on this because I really want to get this all done, make it look really nice. I'm going to probably glue this back into the rock once I'm done. It was really nice to have it in the rock because it's not going to blow away with the air current that's coming through the air scribe. But now you can see what the bottom looks like, which is kind of cool, because the place where the legs and the gills are at is now exposed. And these two little knobs up here on the front, I think, are where some antennae would attach at one point or another. Fortunately, it does seem to fit back into its original spot, which makes me happy. All right, let's get back to it, shall we?
right, so I've gotten to the point where I have to turn up the pressure because I've, I've tried several times and the little blob you see right here just will not go away. It's the same kind of, uh, it's, made, it's the same kind of fossil as this one. As far as its building components, it just, I can't get it to, to be removed at this low of a pressure. So I'm going to have to turn up the pressure. I only want to do so slightly and only while I'm hitting this particular fossil. But yeah, we're going to turn it up just a little bit, see how that does. All right, guys, so this is the finished product. This is what it looks like once I put it back inside the rock. It's not glued in yet, but it's looking pretty good. Unfortunately, I did make a slight error. I could not get that little fossil that was over the right eye to be removed by using the air abrasive. So I used that the air scribe, and what ended up happening was is that instead of just quickly removing that extra little fossil, it put a big crack right in front of the entire thing. So you can't see it very well because I made sure to put it in just right. So there is a crack running through the cephalon, so separating it from the thorax and the pagidium. Um, so lesson learned there. Make sure you have the right equipment. In addition to the crack running through the cephalon, you can see on the left portion of the thorax, the little tips of each of the individual segments are missing and I am not sure where they are. I looked for them, I could not find them, and that happened at the same time the crack ran through the cephalon. So hopefully in the next little while we can add to the list of things to get a small microscopic air scribe to be used. A friend of mine who works at the Utah Museum of Natural History in their paleontology fossil prep lab recommended a few good brands for me and we're gonna see if we can get one and then that way we don't have to worry about this kind of stuff happening in the future but overall I'm pretty happy with it it looks really nice I think and yeah thank you for being so patient guys I really do appreciate that I've had a lot of technical issues that I had to overcome with this one because we were using a different vacuum that was much louder and the app I use to make these videos does not remove background noise very well, so I've had to re-record all the audio for this entire thing, basically. And that is uh, really time-consuming, and I'm sure you noticed some of the lines did not quite match up with the movie. And to top that off, my computer crashed, and that was a whole big ordeal I had to fix. But anyway, big thank you to the University of Utah Office of Undergraduate Research for funding this. I really appreciate all that they've done for me, and thank you again. Next time, we should be able to see some videos of me working on some aminoids, so be sure to stay tuned for that next time. See you all later. Bye!